Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Matthew. I am your host, Ruel Barksdale, and today we're going to look again at the 10th chapter of Matthew. We'll give an overview of the apostles and their charge. Pick up your cross and follow me. But what is the cross? And what is the cost? And does that get to the meaning of life in general? Those and other questions we'll answer as we revisit the 10th chapter of Matthew. Now, a few, as we always do, a few things that we need to talk about just to lay the foundation of what we're going to look at. You know, today it is very popular for people to wear a gold or a silver cross on a necklace around their neck, and it's a, it supposedly is a sign of Christianity. However, when you look at the true meaning of the cross, from a historical perspective, if we could travel back into the streets of, of the Jewish nation of Israel, when someone was carrying a cross, it was not a, a cross around their neck. It was a wooden cross. And to carry a cross meant certain death. Because before crucifixion, many times the person that had been sentenced to die would be ordered to carry a cross through the streets to the place of crucifixion. So to pick up a cross and carry it was to walk yourself to certain death, a painful death, a death of shame, a death of separation from what you knew, from, who, from those that loved you. It was meant to dissuade, discourage, and, and direct people to a different uh, thought process that would make them compliant uh, with those that were in charge of government and to a degree in charge of the synagogue. So tonight, what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at the 12 disciples. Who were they? Because in the 10th chapter of Matthew, what we see Christ doing is he is commissioning these 12. He's talking to them by themselves. He's not with the crowd at this point. And he commissions them and, and he gives them power and he gives them authority and they can cast out demons. They can heal the sick. They can even raise the dead. And as he's talking to them, he's telling them specifically what he expects of them and tells them what it's going to cost them. And I'd like to just run through their names real quickly and, um, and tell you, this is from Bible Info, and tell you who they were and when they decided to pick up the cross, what did it cost them? Now, to, in a sense, pick up your pick up the cross um, is is a way of saying your life is no longer your own. There was there was a book uh, some over, over twenty years ago by Rick Warren, and that book I believe has sold about fifty million copies all over the world, and the the intriguing nature of the book is that it gets us to look at the purpose of life. And in the beginning of the book, um, he, he says four words that sort of shook me up and, and changed the way I thought about life. He said, it's not about you. Your life, my life, it's not, it's not about you, not about me. And many times people go through life uh, and you might have heard the question, are you happy? You, you might have asked somebody the question, are you happy? As if happiness is the meaning of life. Happiness is the pursuit of life. It's even in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And here it is. And among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so we spent our lives pursuing happiness, but what if life was not about our happiness? 
What if life was about a purpose-driven life? What if life was about picking up a cross and following Christ? What, what if life was, was about dying, maybe not physically, maybe not on a, on a, uh, a, a cross where we're being crucified, but crucifying our flesh and giving up our wants and, and giving up our desires and giving up our passions? Maybe life isn't about my career or my family, or my pursuit of happiness. In the 10th chapter, we'll, we'll go on to see that Christ tells these 12 men, if you gain your life, all the things that you're pursuing, your happiness, your career, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it, you'll gain it. And so the question is, what does it cost to follow Christ? What is this commission that he gave them? And how does that relate to us? Well, let's, let's look at uh, the, the, the disciples. Uh, their names, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, uh, Matthew, Philip. Uh, so, well, well, we'll just go through them. Um, the apostles, there were 12 of them. And um, they had a special importance. Um, the 12 disciples or apostles of Jesus were the foundation stones of his church. Several even wrote portions of the Bible. In Revelations 21, 14, we are told that the 12 foundations of the wall of Jerusalem will have in them the names of the 12 apostles. I, and so we've come to understand that God attaches great importance to these 12 men. So who were they? Whenever you hear them, see them, read of them in the Bible, whether it, it is in Mark, uh, Luke, or Matthew, Peter is always listed first. Peter becomes the leader of the 12. Simon Peter, son of Jonas, was a fisherman who lived in Bethsaida and Capernaum. You know, Capernaum was where Jesus pretty much hung out. That was, that was the, um, the grounds where he lived most of his three years of ministry. He would move on from there to go out and teach and preach, but per Capernaum was, was the home base. Peter had, did his evangelistic and missionary work among the Jews, going as far as Babylon. He was a member of the inner circle and authored the two New Testament epistles which bear his name. Tradition says he was crucified head down in Rome. This fisherman called the bear to pick up his cross. James. What, would, what do we know about James? Well, James was the elder brother, the son of Zebedee and, and Siloam, uh, brother of John the Apostle, a, a, a fisherman who, who lived in Bethsaida. He was also in Capernaum and Jerusalem. He preached in Jerusalem and Judea and was beheaded by Herod. He was also a member of the inner circle. So we've got Peter, we've got James, and pretty soon we'll see the third person in the inner circle. Um... James was a member of the inner circle, so-called because they were accorded special privileges. The New Testament tells us very little about James. His name never appears apart from that of his brother John, but they were inseparable. But he was the first of the 12 to become a martyr. John, the third person in the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Uh, John was also a son of Zebedee, a brother of James, he was known as the beloved disciple, and he wrote the fourth gospel. The, the fourth gospel is not one of the uh, synoptic gospels, the word synoptic meaning the same. J James was the beloved disciple. He, James, I'm sorry, John was the beloved disciple. John was the disciple who lays his head on the chest of Jesus at the, the Last Supper. He also was a fisherman who lived in Bethsaida, Capernaum and Jerusalem, a member of the inner circle. He, he wrote the Gospel of John, 
First John, Second John, Third John, and the Revelation. He, he preached among the churches of Asia Minor. He was banished to the Isle of Patmos. He was later freed and died. He was the only apostle, this beloved apostle, the only one to die of natural causes. Uh, Andrew. Andrew was the, the brother of Peter. As a matter of fact, it was Andrew who brought Peter to J Jesus. Come, sh I, I, I've, I've met a man. He, he lived in Bethsaida and, and Capernaum. He was a fisherman before Jesus called him. Originally, he was a disciple of John the Baptist until he heard about this Jesus. And he brought his brother Peter to Jesus. He is the first to have the title of home and foreign missionary. He is claimed by three countries as their patron saint, Scotland, uh, St. Russia, Scotland, and Greece. Uh, he also preached in Scythia, Greece, and Asia Minor. Now, Andrew could have been jealous because, you know, I brought you, Peter, I brought you to Jesus, and now you're on the inner circle, and I'm looking outside, but um, he was arrested. Um, and condemned to die on the cross. But he felt unworthy to be crucified on the same shaped cross as his master. So he begged that his cross be different. He was crucified on an X-shaped cross, which is still called St. Andrew's Cross, and which is one of his apostolic symbols. This fisherman picked up his cross. Bartholomew! also called Nathaniel, son of Talmai, lived in Cana and Galilee, his, of Galilee. His apostolic symbol is three parallel knives. Why? Well, we'll see that in a second. A number of scholars believe that he was the only one of the 12 disciples whose daughter, Maka, was the wife of David, mother of Absalom. Bartholomew's name appears with every list of the disciples, whether in Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or Acts. This was not a first name, however. It was his second name. His first name was probably Nathaniel, whom Jesus called an Israelite indeed, in whom there was no guile. Um, he developed into a man of complete surrender to the carpenter of Nazareth, and one of the church's most adventurous missionaries. He is said to have preached it with Philip. Um, the Armenian church claims him as its founder and martyr. Tradition says that he preached in India and his death seems to have taken place there. He died as a martyr for his Lord. He was flayed alive by knives. That's his symbol, three parallel knives. James the lesser, or, or the younger. James the, the, the lesser or younger, son of Alphaeus or Cleophas, uh, and Mary lived in Galilee. He was the brother of the apostle Jude. According to tradition, he wrote the epistle of James, preached in Palestine and Egypt, and was crucified in Egypt. He was one of the, the little known disciples. Some scholars believe that he was the brother of Matthew, the tax collector. James was a man of strong character with a, and was a fiery type. Still another tradition says that he died as a martyr and his body was sawed in pieces. Judas Iscariot. The traitor, th th this man was the son of Simon who lived in Kiriath of Judah. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, and later he hung himself. The, the man Jews, Judas um, probably believed with all of his heart that, that this Christ figure was going to lead a revolt that would overthrow the, the occupiers, the, the, the government of Rome, and and uh, he was a violent nationalist, followed Jesus because he thought that there was something in, in there that, that was going to allow the Jewish nation to arise to prosperity and prominence. 
He was the treasurer of the twelve. He hung himself after he betrayed Christ. Jude, or, or also called Thaddeus, or Labius, son of Alphaeus or Cleophas, was the brother of James the Younger. He was one of the very little known apostles, and he lived in Galilee. Tradition says he preached in Assyria and Persia, and he also died a martyr. He died a martyr in Persia. By character, he was an intense and, and violent nationalist with, with, the, with the idea that the, the Roman occupiers had to be overthrown. Um, it was said that Jude went to preach the gospel in Edessa near the Euphrates River. There he healed many, and many believed in the name of the Master. Jude went from there to preach the gospel in other places. He was killed with arrows at Ararat. The chosen symbol for him is the ship because he was a missionary thought to be a fisherman. Matthew, the tax collector, the one that was cheating people out of their money, he, the publican, the, he wrote the gospel, however, that we are now in. He was martyred in Ethiopia. This, this Matthew fella, uh, of all the nations in the world, the Jews were the most vigorous haters of tax collectors. To the devout Jew, God was the only one to whom it was right to pay tribute in, in taxes. And so you can see why, why while people hated him, in the minds of many honest Jewish men, these tax collectors were regarded as criminals. And yet Christ called this man. And the only thing that when, when he left his tax collecting desk, when he left his accountant's desk, when he when he left his 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 foundation of wealth, he took one thing with him. He took his pen. He could use a pen, and by his pen, he became the first man to present to the world, in the Hebrew language, an account of the teaching of Jesus. Um, he was a missionary of the gospel who laid down his life for the faith of his master. Philip. Now, tradition says that, that uh, Philip uh, preached in Pergia and died a martyr in Heropolis. Uh, Philip came from Bethsaida, the, the town from which Peter and Andrew came. The likelihood is that he, too, was a fisherman. Although the first three Gospels record his name, um, it is in the Gospel of John that Philip becomes a living personality. Scholars disagree on Philip. In, in Acts 6 5, we, we have Philip as one of the seven ordained deacons. Some say that um, he also stayed with Paul in Caesarea and was one of the major figures in the missionary enterprise of the early church. Philip was a man with a warm heart and, and a pessimistic head. He was one who would very much like to do something for others but did not see how it could be done. Yet this simple Galilean gave all he had. In return, God used him. It is said that he died by hanging. While he was dying, he requested that his body be wrapped not in linen, but in papyrus, for he was not worthy that even his dead body should be treated as the body of Jesus had been treated. Simon, Simon the Zealot. The Zealots were, were people that were strong, fanatical nationalists. They would kill Roman soldiers if they could or anybody that sided with the Roman government. They, they were crazed with hatred for the Romans. It was this hate for Rome that destroyed the city of Jerusalem. Josephus says the Zealots were reckless persons, zealous in good practices and extravagant and reckless in the worst kinds of actions. From this background, we see that Simon was a fanatical nationalist, a man devoted to the law. And we're almost to the end. Thomas, you remember old doubting Thomas? Thomas, you, you had to show him something. He wasn't going to believe something just because you said it. Oh, no, Thomas... 
But yet Thomas was one of the twelve. He lived in Galilee. Tradition says he labored in Parthia, Persia, and India. He also suffered martyrdom near Madras at Mount St. Thomas in India. Thomas was his Hebrew name, and Didymus was his Greek name. At times he was called Judas. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where he wanted to know how, uh, to, were, were, was where he was called that, but where he wanted to know how to know the way where Jesus was going. In John 25, we see him saying, unless he sees the nail prints in Jesus' hand and the gash of the spear in his side, he wasn't going to believe that, in fact, that was his Lord. You had to show Thomas something. Um, it is said that he was comp commissioned to build a palace for the king of India, and he was killed with a spear as a martyr for the Lord. There you have the 12, my brothers and sisters, and um, I'm going a little bit longer tonight. We won't get to read into the 10th chapter. Just one thing I'd like to share with you. Um, actually, I'll do that next week. The question next week is, what has God called us to be? As you can see, these 12 men that gave up all to follow Christ, pick, literally picked up their cross to follow him. When we read the from the 34th verse of chapter 10 to the end of chapter 10, we'll see the rest of the commission. Not only were they given power, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. They were given a, an authority to be the first missionaries commissioned by Christ himself. Listen, I love you. Ooh. Next week, we're going to really get into this uh, fin and finish the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew. So tell a friend, tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Matthew. I just maybe. By the time our walk is over, you and your enemy might be friends. I love you. God loves you more. Bye-bye.